it's Ruby <laughs> and today I am going to be giving you some ideas of things that you can do from the beginning of the year to make sure that your year goes much more smoothly, to make sure that it's more organised, to make sure that you are more productive. So if you can't already tell, I am not currently in my usual filming station. I am actually in Greece at the moment. My family and I are on holiday in Corfu. And if you couldn't tell, that was my sister just walking past. And she heard me do my intro and she always laughs at that. She always tries to imitate it. I'm sorry as well about the slightly wet hair. I went swimming about an hour and a half ago to three hours ago. I'm not really sure. And it hasn't fully dried yet, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I'm going to be giving you some tips and I hope that some of it helps. I'm not sure when or if you've already gone back to school, but, but I think even if you are in your first few weeks, these tips are really still helpful and things that you should maybe think about when you are planning ahead on your year because right at the beginning of the year, September or August or October, that's when you really need to get your habits in place and this is really what's going to assure your productivity for the rest of the year. Not necessarily, but what I found in practice. The first tip that I have relates to revision and that is to find and identify the type of revision that you want to follow through with for the rest of the year. So, for example, you might want to use flashcards, you might want to use handwritten notes, you might want to use mind maps, but you want to decide how you learn best, how you're going to revise best, and how, therefore, you want to write up your notes as you're going through the year. This is really important, I think, to decide at the beginning of the year, because in so many cases, this has happened to myself, this has happened to loads of my friends, where... At the beginning of the year, you think, oh, well, I think I'm going to revise with this, you know, um, I'm going to revise with, you know, handwritten notes, loads of other people are doing that, it might work for me. And then it gets to when you have to revise for a test or even the actual things and you realise, actually, no, this isn't helping. I'm going to have to write up all of my notes into this method instead. You decide that that's actually the best method for you. This is really time consuming when it comes to May or June time because then you've got to rewrite up all of your notes that you've done and it's just a waste of time really when you should be focusing on actually learning the content. So I really, really, really think it is worth sitting down, even if this takes a good, you know, half an hour looking into different note taking methods, um, but choosing the type of note taking method that you would like to follow through with for the rest of the year. Your notes will actually end up being much more consistent and organized because they're all in the same format and it's easier to store them. I mean, let's say that one time you were doing you know, a certain note, note taking method but then you switch to the Cornell method or something and as a result of that, there, you just don't have that level of consistency and I don't think that's very helpful when you come to revise. So at the beginning of the year, reflect on your past exams, reflect on the revision that you've done in the past and think, well, what works best for me? This is the type of note-taking method that I'm going to proceed with for the rest of the year. However, obviously this is a very different story if you are starting in year 10 or if you are starting, I don't know, maybe freshman year of high school where you are actually putting in, put in a situation where you, which you haven't really been in before and you're revising in a way that you haven't before. Maybe you haven't actually had this practice, this time to reflect upon your past exams, your past revision. And in which case, I think it's really important to begin to experiment with different revision strategies. I think using the first month of school to experiment is, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you're not wasting time uh, and it's much better to do it then than to do it later in the year. So maybe at the beginning you might think, okay, I'm gonna try typed notes and you start doing those, then maybe when you've got those done, you can look at it and think, okay, I'm gonna actually try and learn this now. Even if you don't have to, you know, look at that and say, okay, I've got this sheet of notes, I'm gonna try and learn this. And think about how you go about learning that. And from that, you can basically decide which revision method actually works best for you. So actually through practice, you're going to determine that. And even if that first one doesn't work, you've got the next week to try a different method. And even if you have to rewrite up those notes that you took in the first two weeks using a different method, that's much, much better than having to write up eight months worth of work at the end of the year. I realize I've been talking about note taking for such a long time, but I think this is important. So that then leads on to my next point, which is to make your notes consistently as you are going along. I think this is something that you should try and incorporate into your 
routine, so an actual routine that you have. So maybe at the end of every day, you are going to go through everything that you did that day and write it up onto flashcards, handwritten notes. Maybe you're going to wait till the end of the week. Maybe you're going to wait for the end of the topic. I think it kind of depends on the type of note-taking method you decide on, but I think that's something to really think about doing from the very beginning of the year because I cannot tell you how thankful you will be when it comes to the end of the year and you've got all of your revision resources just to start revising from. Another thing related to that again is to actually revise from the beginning of the year. So those tiny, sorry, the doors are creaking now, I'm gonna show you. They're just moving back and forth in the wind. And behind that, you can see this absolutely stunning view. I just, I can't even get over this view. Yes, if you revise from the beginning of the year, you become more familiar with the information and it's actually already, you already know it. So when you actually have to do a test and you're actually exam at the end of the year, it's re it really is just refreshing your mind. It's going over the things you already really know. When you go over things multiple times, I find that it's much more helpful in actually sticking in your mind and it's, it's much more useful, especially when you have to apply your knowledge because you're not just regurgitating fact, you actually have to understand it. And I think giving that information some time to absorb, I think it's underrated how, how useful that is. Another thing to remember from right at the beginning of the year is it is okay not to understand everything and not to be 100% confident on everything. That is completely normal and it doesn't make you inferior. It doesn't mean that you're incapable if you don't understand it the first time. It just means that you need a little more time. It means that you can still improve. And I think it's important to remember that there's no shame in asking for help. So I think art being I think from the beginning, being open to asking your teacher, asking your friends if they can help you on something is really important and really key because I think the more time you leave it, the harder it becomes. So if at the end of the year you then go to your teacher and you haven't been before, it seems more daunting. It clears things up a lot, quick, a lot more quickly if you feel okay going to ask a friend or a teacher or a parent maybe or an older sibling. This is just going to save you so much stress if you remember that. So. Keep that in mind and things will be much easier in the long run. But most importantly on that note, uh, this means that you are actually going to understand the content because that's so much more important than just remembering it because, I mean, ultimately, you're not going to be able to apply it. I was saying earlier about application. You can't apply it if you don't actually understand the material. Another thing which can be really useful in, in that regard, even if you have actually managed to resolve it, if it's something you did struggle with, then I think using a traffic light system on your work can be really useful. So if it was something you actually had to take quite a lot of time to get round, then label it red. If it was okay, you know, it was quite challenging, but not massively yellow, then green if it was really straightforward, because when it comes to the end of the year and you're having to revise from these notes, it becomes, it's, it's so much easier because you can just look at it and think, okay, I'm gonna start with the red, then I'll go yellow, then I'll go green. Then organization. This is so important to keep in mind from the beginning of the year because it will just change the rest of your year if you can start off on the right foot. I think all of us have been in a position where it comes to, you know, maybe April, May time, and you look at all of your notes and you think, why on earth didn't I keep this organized from the beginning? That was definitely me in maybe, I think year 10. Organizing your folder is really key. Um, making sure you have dividers so that everything is separated into not just subjects but also topics, you know, subtopics. And having these dividers, actually keeping this organization strategy intact, it's so easy for us to just get one stray, one stray, I can't say that, one stray sheet of paper and then just shove it in the front of your folder and then that just accumulates and then you end up with loads of paper and it's not all sorted out and then you've got to spend time actually putting this all in the right place when you should be doing something else and it's just so much easier if you can just stick to that divider system from the beginning. So I think actually, again, adding this into your routine and having a certain time of the day when maybe or the end of the week, where you go through your folder, you make sure everything's in the right place, you transfer it to other folders, for example. You might also want to have some sort of key for your notes. So for example, I did this in year 12, but I didn't carry it on for the whole of uh, for year 13. So I 
got these mini um, coloured circular stickers and I had a different colour for each of my subjects and then I had a little symbol on it to symbolise the kind of work that it was. So whether it was class notes, you know, messy class notes, neat class notes, homework, extension work, um, refine notes and it just made it so much easier to actually navigate my folder so I do recommend doing that if that's something that maybe appeals to you. Also come up with a space where everything to do with school or university will be stored so all of your work is in one place and you don't have to go hunting around the house looking for something. Another thing which I would recommend is to plan your morning and night routine in advance and actually have one set out that you can, maybe even if it's just for the first term and then you refresh it every term, or if it's one that you're going to plan to sustain for the whole of the year. I think having a morning or night routine planned, this is something I do and I love it so much. It's allowed me to be so much more productive actually having this planned. Um, I'm actually planning on filming a video on how to plan a perfect morning or night routine and so do stay tuned for that. Um, let me know if that's something you would like to see. But I think getting that done from the beginning of the year and I, it's just going to allow you to sustain motivation for the rest of the year as opposed to it just being this massive motivational productivity blast in September and then it just peters out for the rest of the year. Um, so I said about revising for topic tests. It's also really useful when you revise for topic tests to see your progress accurately and you can see the gradual progress that you make. So for example, when you don't revise for it, you don't get an accurate reflection of how much you know. And I think, look, I know lots of people come up with the excuse that, well, I'm not gonna revise for this to see where I am without revision. I think it's much more useful to think about how much revision you're probably going to ideally be putting into the end of your exams and actually do this for your subtopic. The level of intense revision that you would expect to put into that single topic when it comes to the end of the year. So not, you know, I'm going to do a 10 hour revision day because that's what I'm going to do in May. No, it's saying I think I'm probably going to spend, you know, two hours intense revision when it comes to exam season on this. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then you can see accurately whether this is a topic you need to focus on more in revision or less in revision. Take my word for it, I think doing this consistently over the year is really going to help you. Another thing you could do is ask older students or um, look online on YouTube for advice. Ask them basically the question of what I wish I had known before I started you know, high school or A-levels or GCSEs or Key Stage 3. When you're working on other people's personal experience, there will be things that they wish they had done and by talking with these people you are able, or listening to their videos on YouTube, watching their videos on YouTube, you're able to implement these things into your own year to make sure that it is more productive and more effective. Um, I'm really sorry as well for the change in quality. Um, I was filming on my camera, but it has unfortunately run out and it's gonna take too long to charge up. Um, the lighting, it's because it, it's getting quite late, I feel as though the lighting is just gonna deteriorate if I leave this any later. And so I'm filming on my phone for the rest of the video and I'm really sorry because the quality is definitely not as good, but um, thank you for continue to, continuing to watch anyway. I think the audio actually is particularly bad on here. Another thing to do with organisation is to set up or get a trusted homework slash study planner, which you can use for the rest of the year. Um, so having a place where you can write down all of your homework tasks that you are going to complete and actually look ahead and say, well, this is due for this day, that kind of thing. It's really, really useful to have a method of doing that and get into a habit of actually writing down your homework so that you stay on top of it for the rest of the year. And actually think about this planning method from the beginning of the year because it's one that you're going to sustain the whole way through. So think about the one that's going to be best for you. It's much better than changing halfway through because it just makes it more confusing. Have a look into different planners, find the best one for you now. Um, I think it will definitely, you'll, you'll think it's worth it. The last thing relating to organization, which I just like to mention is to get into a habit of keeping your room tidy and at the beginning of the year, so September, you know, when the school year starts, making an effort to declutter and put everything in your room in a place so that it's got a place and it always has a home to go back to when you're tidying. Because the worst thing is finding something going, 
got this camera but I have no idea where to put it. And then you lose things and then you waste time and you're looking for your favorite notebook and you don't know where it is so you can't start studying or you're worrying because you can't find your headphones. You have to spend so much time that you could be spending doing something else, looking for, looking for something. So spending that time, getting organized at the beginning of the year, not just in terms of schoolwork, but also in terms of general things at home can be really useful. And I think you'll be really thankful for that later in the year. Adding that into your routine, adding tidiness into your routine, I think helps for productivity. Okay, then I've got two things which aren't really related to studying and revision, but they're more generally to do with well-being and things that I would recommend. So the first thing reg um, is with, the, with regards to friends and socializing and I do think it's really important to make sure that from the beginning of the year you are seeing friends and you are making time for socializing because it's really easy to get caught up with school especially when you're in year 11 or year 13 or I'd imagine senior year of, or junior year of high school. I think finding time for that from the beginning is really important. And what I would recommend doing, this is something I think could be quite useful, is to have some sort of rough timetable which you can use. So for example, you might just block out on Saturday afternoons or Saturday evenings, or Saturday night, I want to see my friends at this point. And that's a time where you even if for the rest of the week you are completely jam-packed with other commitments and schoolwork you do have that small window of time where you are able to see friends and i didn't actually schedule time for seeing friends i would see friends when i got a chance to when i felt i wanted to see somebody there is a misconception as well which i'm going to point out now that i didn't see any friends for the whole of my year 12 and year 13 life, uh, that is completely false. I did see my friends and I just didn't really film it for YouTube because when I was doing study days, that's not when I was seeing friends. Just keep that in mind, that's something that I did want to mention. One thing that I kind of, in retrospect, which I'd done is actually had a time which I blocked out to see friends. And another thing regards extracurriculars in the exact same way, using the same timetable method and that is to make sure that you are making time for extracurriculars and things which aren't schoolwork and aren't socializing. So even though the socializing and extracurriculars sometimes go hand in hand. This is something you will be thankful for, I think, um, for the whole of the year. If at the beginning you plan out how you can still make time for studying and revision, but you can also make time for other things and actually thinking about that creaking is so annoying. I'm so sorry. Close that door too. And if you plan this out at the beginning of the year and you think of how you can actually manage your time to make time for both things, it makes it a lot easier later in the year when especially I think around February time, making a general study plan, you know, I'm going to study Spanish at this time, on this day and maths on this day. At the beginning of the year, around your extracurriculars can be really useful because you know that you have enough time for to do all of these things. Um, so I think doing that at the beginning of the year will really pay off and be really useful. So that's all of the things that I wanted to share with you. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I'm sorry again for the change in camera quality halfway through. I hope that it wasn't too noticeable and that it wasn't too annoying. Um, but please stay tuned for more back to school videos, which I will be filming. I'm going to try and film one other back to school video while I'm here, just to sit down one because I can film these. Um, it's just hard to do routines and things while I'm here because I don't have access to the things that I would ordinarily have when I'm filming, when I'm actually getting ready for school. Um, but yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you again for watching and have a productive week.